I am super focused into the charger, onto the drone. Yeah, I'm blown away. It's 14 boundaries. It's going to change. It had nothing and it just. How's it going, folks? This is a brand new channel. If you're here for the first time, which you probably are, make sure to hit the subscribe button. You know, we're going to start it off like this. Folks say that drones in the ag is not going to work. There's no way it's going to work. Well, I'm here to tell you there's a new way, ag. And I'm telling you right now, it's going to change the industry of how crops are sprayed. Join us as we are going to Tennessee right now to a past customer of ours uh, in drone deer recovery, bought a Agris T40 and due to some shipping issues, he was not able to get his whole order shipped to him. He needs some stuff sprayed and he needs it sprayed now. So I'm loading up one of our Agris T40s on the back here and we're driving through the night to get down there and spray some acreage for him. It's not a bunch, but I wanna take this time to train him how to use his T40 that way he can be efficient in spraying his crop yield. I think most of this stuff that he's spraying is for deer, but it doesn't matter what you have, 100 acres, 1,000 acres, 10,000 acres, it doesn't matter. I personally, with one trailer this year, have covered over 11,000 acres with my drones. If you at all have any interest in having your own drone spraying business, make sure to reach out to us and we'll get you hooked up with everything you need to start your successful drone spraying business. We'll be here all night, join us. I might get a little sleepy, I don't know. We'll see you down there. We have arrived on location. That was a, a little bit of a drive. There, it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve. The, uh, did you download that app? That's something you're gonna wanna make an account for that uh, because basically you're gonna build your fields on that app, you know, wherever you wanna spray. Unless you have new fields that are not on satellite image, you can also do it with your drone. It just takes long. So when you uh, handle these around by yourself, you always handle them from the back. If you don't, these will unfold on you. Once you start working with them a little bit, it's actually pretty easy to handle around. But like what this thing can do, it's just nuts. How little it is and how much it can do, it blows your mind. Three acres per tank because you got 10 gallons. If you spray two gallons per acre, you're gonna get five. Usually, it depends on how far you're going. If you're filling this thing up and you're going 3,000 feet over there to spray something, you better get that fluid dumped real fast by the time you get there because it will use a 3,000 foot or a 2,000 foot run full. By the time you get there, you're gonna be 75% battery. And if it goes down, and it can't start right away, like there's trees in the way, or there's just something holding it up. Every second it sits there hovering, that battery is draining. So let's say it's at 70% and you still got 10 gallons in, you're gonna be hard pressed to get that out fast enough in order to so, make a bet. By the time I get there where I'm gonna be at, and I know I can't get into any situation where it stops, and if it does stop, I need to know right now what I have to do to correct the issue that it's in. Because if you sit there on your remote and you're like, how do heck i mean it's not wanting to move or this is that it's just sitting there eating battery in the beginning you might be slow you don't understand the whole thing the more you do it the more you so basically i'm gonna start on my phone on the app and i'm gonna have you next to me and tell me what fields we're doing for sure so these uh fields right here is that what yeah, you're I thinking mean, if we wanted to start with the easy things so actually i'm gonna let you do it so basically you you pull it right you take that and you drop it yep now hit the plus down here so you're dropping a point and so then just start dropping more points so you're not cutting the edge off and then we'll we'll talk so that tree is on the other side right yep so you don't have to worry about that and then once you're done to you just hit and close and then you go up here you hit save and then you can name it whatever you want to name it so that area you just boundary that is 1.31 acres. We can view that field, we can see where it's at. What this is doing is it's putting it on your account. Now your remote that is linked to this drone, you connect it to your internet, you can just download this field right to your remote. Just, you could build that field on your remote, but it's just so easy to do it on your phone. So let's say we do this field on your remote and you get back there and you're oh shit, there's a tree there. You can put, build an obstacle inside of that field, but you have to edit the field. RTA means return to home. So when this goes to fly a mission, it's gonna ask you RTH height. 
normally you would go up to go home well if you're flying a mission underneath these high you know high tension power lines when it gets done with its mission underneath it you can't it'll rth and it'll go it'll want to go up now it has this radar that is supposed to tell you i mean it does sense them i i have had them sense but i would not rely that this thing's going to be dead on every time i map out underneath transmission lines so let's take his transmission line for instance let's say we want to spray under this line now you wouldn't build your whole field like this but you would only do underneath the field like this so what i'm doing here is i'm going to build this field now i'm still in technically in the same field this looks at not that as a 20 acre field it just what i just oh, built okay. that's one and then i'm going to build the next one right next to it that way when i'm flying i am super focused on this field and maybe not as much on this one because I'm not underneath the line. Right. When you're going over 2,000 feet from where you're launching. If it's really easy, you got a trailer set up and it's no big deal, throw it on the truck, drive down there. But for myself, if I were here and I'm gonna spray a field down across there and it's 1,900 feet away, I'm launching it from here. I got my water here, I got everything I need from right here. Once it's connected, now it's been connected. You've seen how it turned green. Now I want to get that map that you and I just created. I'm going to hit that little thing up there. It'll load, hit this little download button, hit that. And we just called it A01. We download it. Crop height, we're going, we'll go 14 feet. And then once you got that dialed in there, you hit save and she's ready to go. over there I just tell it to go and now it's gonna stay at that altitude unless I push it up but it's still gonna go over to the field but it goes slow so I want to go faster see how close we're getting that power line it's right there it'll sense it if we go underneath it yeah. it's pretty tall though yeah but you have to think that the drone is above the crop about 16 feet like from the ground up it's high but when you yeah. let's say the crops 10 feet and it's 16 above that you're at 26 feet. Holy <laughs> your pond's looking good down there. Yeah. It was built, but it was brown and it was yeah. filling up. So now I can stop the drone because now it wants to come home. I hop right back into my maps, go to that one. And I gotta be fast doing this stuff because it's gonna sit there and hover. Once I get that, I just selected it. It was already built, but now I'm gonna watch it because that sucker is gonna go underneath the power line. So I wanted to go up and then we're 16 feet from that line right now. So we're just gonna spray this manually. So we're gonna hit this button up here. Now we're spraying. We're so close to the weeds and the, the, ceil the ceiling up top. I tell you to not do this. I'm gonna shut the radar off in order for me to keep going. But you gotta be super careful. Now I'm watching the bottom and I'm watching the line up top. Once you do this, like I'm comfortable doing it, it probably wouldn't be recommended. So we smoked that. So another thing you can do since you see that one green line that was underneath the line, if you're like, well, I don't know if it, you know, did everything, you can just grab it by hand and fly it over. It's coming all the way down. So if you're manual spraying, you're watching your altitude, you're watching how fast you're going, you're watching your radar. There's a lot of stuff that you're watching. That point, that center center point right there, that is where the drone is headed. So if I would start going straight forward, I'm not gonna get a good line. So if I wanna make a, you know, a straight line and I'm going down this field, I, I wanna make sure I start there. Because if you try to correct it once it's moving, then it'll like start doing this as a manual operation, it, it'll look goofy. And then we're gonna hit the button and go forward. That that turned the spray on, you see? Now I turned it off. So I'm not got now I'm going to back up because the spray turned off. Well, it turned shut off back here. So now we're going to turn it back on and move forward. I mean, that is dumping it down there. So yeah, it knows where it stopped and like you see it knows it ran out right there. In Indiana, we didn't use a lot of drift agent cuz it is pricey. Uh, but back home in Ohio, that's Every guy that had it done had to put that in. So it paused right there, and you're gonna run it. You're gonna run into that, which it's gonna ask you: Do you want to go to one, two, or break point? Break point is just slightly back. We would always pull it back, go up, and then hit resume. Now it's gonna go back to where it originally stopped because the spray shut off, and then it's gonna continue on. So just fly slower and then the brain can process to climb where right now we're going so fast that it's like, it just stops. 
Yes. After it goes and does a mission and it comes back, it'll tell you what you got left. So you take this thing, this is the, the charge and go like this. You can charge the battery just like this, but if you're running all day, you got, you're gonna wanna cool them. Like right now we could pull that battery out and charge it cause it's not hot. But if you're doing it like constantly into the charger, onto the drone back, it's gonna start getting hot. So you just put this thing in here and it's got two fans basically. When you activate it, it'll, it'll be cooling. There's a box in here. Like if you run it in the rain, this is a computer in here. So basically it takes AC and turns it into DC and throws it out here. It's that push and then a hold. Same with these batteries. You gotta watch how you put them in here because if you put them in crooked, it'll start jacking up the batteries inside here. So to start this generator, you turn on the battery. So this is what, you know, gives you the power. So you turn on the battery and then you just hold and it'll fire up. You understand about building boundaries with inside your DJI Smart Farm app. Once you get in here, to get those maps that you built, you're gonna have to connect your remote. You gotta click this download button. Basically, every map that you built in your phone on the app will show up up top. When you uh, hit that download button, it's going to the cloud to get those down. Then whatever you wanna download, let's say you built you know, 14 boundaries, you're gonna have to click every one of those 14. Then you gotta confirm it. Now it's going to take it and put it onto your, your remote. Now that you have your boundaries in your remote, every time you wanna go spray your field, you just open up the app. If you have a huge 20 acre field, and let's say it's like dog lake, like twisty like this, you might be better off like making this a boundary, that a boundary. Yeah, so the drone is more efficient with inside that. So once you have that preset in there, it's going to have that every time it runs out of fluid. Let's say it's gonna take 50 gallons. You take 10 gallons out and then it comes back. It, it saves where it stopped and how many gallons it's already sprayed, and you don't have to do that every time. This morning I was flying, flying it manually. You make sure that that line that it's going to, to the field, that there's nothing in the way, because if there's a tree there, it's just gonna stop. It's not gonna keep going. This RTH altitude, connection routing altitude, that's how high the drone will go. It's gonna calculate that. Now it's gonna go to 98 feet and then come back. If you want the drone to take off and go up and go to the field 98 feet, you gotta turn this on. Next one's task complete. When the task is done, what do you want the drone to do? You can choose these options. Go into hover, just sit there till you tell it to go home or make it return to home automatically. So now well, I'm gonna turn this L2 on. This is auto obstacle avoidance on. Auto obstacle avoidance enabled. I would just hold this and go as fast as it's gonna let you go. At two gallons an acre, you're gonna be be able to max the drone out 32 feet per second. If you're not comfortable with that, dial it down to 25. So that's gonna go 23 uh, feet per second. Your route spacing is 24, and you're, you, know, you put your height yeah. above the crop. If you're f spraying grass fields like that, you could yeah. probably do 10, you know, 10 to 14. It, it's not a big difference, maybe a little, you'll get a, the swath might be a little bit uh, wider. So we go 14, it's still not taking off, you see your route, like if you're like, well, I don't want to fly the field that way. Okay. You want to fly it this way. Okay. You click this little button right here. You turn this off, auto optimization. So that's turned on automatically. Okay. It's going to figure out what is the best way to do this. If you don't want that, shut that off. And then you can either push these buttons right here okay. to turn the direction or grab a hold of this thing right here. So basically, if you scroll down, at, so let's let's start over. So you click this button up top, okay. you go to this remote icon, and then you scroll down to custom button, mm -hmm. and L1, horizontal obstacle avoidance, okay. L2, obstacle bypass, and L3 is tilt your camera down. You want that so you can quickly just yeah. look down, am I gonna hit anything? look right back up. So if you hit it once, it'll look down. You hit it again, it'll look out. Your RTK settings are always like this. You want RTK orientation. You want that turned on. It's just a lot more accurate. So it'll use the antennas on it. To... You have to put your batteries in every battery. So you're gonna have four batteries. You gotta put it in and you gotta set that battery at low battery. You want it to return to home. You want it not just to give you a warning, but get that thing back. Yeah until you're comfortable with and you understand the energy management side of things. At 5%, the camera will automatically turn down and the drone will start coming down. Now you can push this, force it 
to not land. So it's it's coming down and you're like, no, no, you won't. It'll go up and then you forget and then it's all, it's coming down again. So you can force it. I've pushed it to zero. Like it had nothing and it just right to the road edge. So if you wanna calibrate the pump flow, that you'll have to do this when you first, you fill it to the top and you just go in here and hit calibrate. Let it do its cycle. It'll go through and uh, it will weight sensors, do a tear calibration, which is completely empty. Basically, you have to put five and a half gallons of fluid in the tank and then hit calibrate and it'll calibrate and then it'll know. It bases how much fluid is in it based on weight. He's got some uh, cutovers out back that he wants to see how it would do. So throw it on side by side and take it out back. But you'll need to uh, fly it slowly. If you want it to do auto, you'll have to tell it to fly slow. But some of that you you might just have to do it manually. So it's going to use a good bit of energy to go up, over, and then back down. So you're gonna you're gonna want to remember that this is this guy is going down in, and then to get back out, it's gonna have to go all the way back up. Obstacle avoidance enabled. I'm gonna take Obstacle it off manually. We're gonna send this drone down in this cutover that he has. It's steep, and we're gonna see how it does. We're gonna do some auto and then some manual flying, but we'll send it out there and. This is gonna be game changing for him because he can send the drone down in to cut over like that. Dude, that is insane. Because you can see where you've gone. So like here, here I'll go over a little bit and then I'll, I'll turn back like this. So here's another thing is that orange line is the closest distance to get back to your, where you took off. It's definitely not gonna be for a guy that's his no. first day, but after like learning how to operate it properly, dude, you're gonna smoke that. It might still take you, what, uh, a whole day to spray the whole thing, but I think after a, you know staying up on it, it'll get easier. So this is Stuart, this is our customer. Give us your first takes of this technology. You, you said you did quite a bit of research before we got here, but when you've seen it in person. Yeah, I'm blown away. It's, it's, it's faster, it's cheaper, it's more effective. Uh, we can get the drone in places I'd never even think about yeah. getting equipment or a tractor or conventional spray rig. It's really going to help me uh, manage not only food plots, but early successional and, and just natural habitat. Uh, oftentimes people ask, well, how are they going to do in hills and tight areas? And we went back to one of his cutovers and we sent the drone in there and did just fine. Yeah, that's about as steep of an area as I've got. And it, like you said, you slow it down to where, you know, the computer has time to catch up and it, it did great. Yeah, this technology I'm telling you guys right now is going to change the industry of farming and ranching of how you apply your chemicals or organic material however you you know ranch but it's pretty crazy so Stuart here is one of our first customers to get a t40 and i think it's really going to change how he's able to take care of his ranch he's got here so i appreciate it thanks Thank so you. much for Looking forward to it. reaching out to thank us. you Alrighty folks, we just got wrapped up here. We uh, did approximately, I don't know, nine to 10 acres, sunflowers, a little bit of alfalfa, showed our customer how to use it on his fence. And that's really gonna come in key for him to, you know, stay on top of keeping the trees and the brush down on his fence. But he's very impressed with how this is gonna change how he takes care of his ranch and I'm excited for him. But that's how we do it here at New Way Ag. You know, everybody out there is saying that there's no way that these drones are gonna work and I'm telling you, new way is the way. That's it for this video. Hit the subscribe button. I would appreciate it and we'll see you on the next one.